Hi everyone, today is Saturday, September 20th, and welcome to episode 17 of Knits and Stuff. My name is Alicia, and today I'll be talking about events and alongs, works in progress, pretty things, local delights, and wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Um, first, welcome to those of you that are new, and for those of you that are returning watchers, thanks for coming back. Um, if you haven't already, there's a group on Ravelry called Knits and Stuff Podcast, and I'll put a link in the show notes, which you can find at knitsandstuff.wordpress.com. So, let's get started. Um, events and alongs, I am still planning on going to the Dixon Lambtown Festival, which is October 4th through 5th. Um, and that is basically a bunch of different vendors and I think there's going to be some livestock there so it's exciting to see some sheep but I've never been before so it should be fun and I know that um, Sherry from Moro Fleece Works is going to be there selling some of their fleeces that they have um, which is how I heard about it to begin with because she sent a little mailing card with the events she's going to be at so I'm excited for that it's not too far away from Berkeley so yeah that's coming up pretty soon it's already past mid-September and I don't know where the year has gone so um yeah so I have no finished objects because I've been slightly distracted which I might talk about a little bit more in Pretty Things. Um, but um, what I do still have is, well, the Twigs and Willows cardigan that I was working on, um, that I made so much progress on last week, I haven't touched. It's still it's still sitting here in the bag next to where I podcast. I haven't opened it. So that means I haven't knitted it at all. Um, but I have been knitting on my socks. Um... These are, oh, they're all tangled now that I put them back in the bag. <laughs> um, these are going to be the basic um, knee-high toe-up socks by Leslie from Single Stitch. And um, I am knitting these out of mustache yarn in um, her perfect sock base in the colorway Sesame, which is a 14 stripe repeat, and I've already hit that 14 stripe so I started with purple at the bottom and now I'm coming back to the purple and the orange um, and then I incorporated the um, the foot of the um, toe up socks with a difference by Wendy Johnson because I wanted to use her toe because I thought that worked better than um, for me at least so yeah, I think I'm just to where I'm going to start the heel, which is going to be the fish lips kiss heel, and then I'm going to start that from the other end of the ball so that I don't um, mess up the stripe pattern on the front of the foot. So yeah, there's that. Oh, and I have my little stitch marker here, which shows how much progress I made from the last time I podcast, which was like that much. <laughs> so not much knitting has been done. Um, since last time, but that's okay. <laughs> and then um, I also, well that's all the knitting that I've done, but I have done some spinning. And so I worked on um, Pigeon Roof Studios Merino Nylon that I finished that um, first half of the braid. And um, I don't have the colorway written down. Hmm. Oops. I think this is this is Digger? I think so. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is Digger. So that's this is the second half of the braid. And then um, I will apply these two together and hopefully get something that looks like sock weight yarn and then make some socks because they are merino and nylon. Um, so I hope, I'm hoping that it's not too thin. But, um, cause at first, well actually, yeah, cause at first I was going to do three ply, but then, um, as I was spinning it up, it was turning out to be way too thick for what a three ply was. But I think as I got used to it, I started spinning a little bit thinner. So, um, it might be a light fingering, which is okay too. So, cause they'll probably just be basic, um, stockinette socks. But, 
uh, yeah, so that is that, and hopefully I'll get to play that this week, and then I'll have something to show next time in the podcast, <laughs> a finished object. Um, yeah, so that is all of my works in progress, which would bring us to pretty things. Um, I made the mistake of <laughs> following, it's not a mistake, um, but I follow the, the Knit Girls on Twitter and, uh, not the Knit Girls, the Knit More Girls on Twitter and I have them set up to mobile alerts so I get text messages on my phone when they have an update um, or when they post an update and um, they posted a link to um, a sale that Lisa Souza was having. Um, so she was getting rid of her original sock base to I think um, replacing it with the merino sock base and she was selling all of her um, extra sock skeins for like, half off almost. So I snagged a couple of those and luckily I had like four in mind that I wanted because we just had to email her and say um, what colors we were interested in and she would check if she still had them because it was first come first serve and um, so I had like four or five in mind but fortunately I only two of them were available or else I would have a lot more but um, so I got two skeins and the first one this is sea foam um, so this is just super 75% super wash wool and 25% nylon you can kind of see yeah um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's that color. It's so pretty. I've been in a mint phase lately, so this goes with it. <laughs> and then the second color I got um, is South Pacific. So it's got that kind of like tropical beachy look. <laughs> and um, yeah, and so that's that. It's got a lot of nice little, I hope it's showing up. I think it's a little bit, um, the color's a little bit blown out on the camera, Maybe if I move it back. I couldn't get the lighting right today, because it was like too dim back in the corner, so I moved the chair up, but now it's hitting the light on the, um, it's coming out of our window over here, so, yeah. <laughs> but that is, um, yeah, that's the second one I got. So those are two pretty things, and then there was another pretty thing that um, is not exactly stash acquisition, but it is acquisition. <laughs> it is something that we bought, and um, I will probably have to go get it because I should at least show the cover of it. So I'll be right back. Okay, so the next acquisition that I made, or that we made, um, which is why I haven't been getting much knitting done, is a game called Destiny. Um, it's available, well, it's a video game, and this is what we bought, <laughs> and it's available on PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, um, Xbox 360, and Xbox One, and we didn't have a PS4, but um, we wanted one eventually, because there's some other games that are coming out for the PS4 that Will wants to get, and there's some that I want to get, um, which I think I mentioned back in E3, well, my... My um, when I podcasted about E3 a little bit, so so we bought the white one and um, with the bundle, so it comes with Destiny, and it is probably best described as um, an MMO FPS RPG, which I think I I think I talked about Destiny a little bit last time, um, not last time, but when I when we did the E3 thing, but um, if you haven't seen it, or if, just to reiterate, um, it's basically a multiplayer um, online game that has a role-playing game aspect to it, so um, you're, the RPG part is kind of like you have this character and you're leveling up and you're choosing skills um, and you're going through this story and it's mainly a shooter game though so that's the first person shooter aspect to it, the FPS. Um, so it's kind of, yeah, I well, so I played um, through the story 
and finished almost all of the story missions. We, I just finished the, the like ending story mission um, yesterday, but there's still like two more side missions to do that are related to the story. And then, um, so they have the main storyline, the main campaign, and then they have um, an online multiplayer part to it where you're just matching, uh, matched up with other people that are playing and usually um, on teams either um, fighting for an objective or just trying to kill people. <laughs> and, then, um, and then there's also uh, what they call strikes, which are similar to raids in an MMO. Um, so you have, the strikes are three people, that, um, and you can either play with people that you know or you get matched up randomly with people that are playing online. and. Um, you basically go through this really difficult mission. That's how it's probably best described. So, and they also came out with a raid that was for people who were like level 26 and above. Um, and that, I, that's like six people and it takes forever apparently. I was watching some of the people try and play on, who were streaming it and it was really difficult. So, um, yeah, that's some of the gameplay and... Um, that's what I've been doing with most of my free time. But we also got the, um, the game guide and, um, which I am getting my fingerprints all over and now Will's gonna be all mad. <laughs> um, so it's basically a guide to, um, the game, like it says. And I guess I just wanted to show some, um, pictures of some of the, the things that you could see. It's pretty nice um, graphics on there, so like this is, I mean this is just an illustration of it, but it's, um, that's the inside cover, and, oh, and the theme is kind of like a, you're in space-ish, you go to different planets, you start on Earth, and then you go to the Moon, um, Mars, and Venus, and you encounter different alien races, so it's that kind of, um, universe, I guess. And oh, and you can choose a type of character, so there are warlocks, titans, and hunters, and I chose a warlock, so that those are those guys. Um, and then, let's see, I want to show some of the, the um, races of the aliens, because they look kind of crazy. But um, it's also made by the same people that made Halo before um, they got bought out by before Microsoft bought the Halo franchise. So yeah, Bungie makes some pretty good pretty good games, pretty good shooters and has some some good maps. Um where is oh so like this is one of the the fallen one of the bad guys <laughs> and um yeah, so that's kind of, oh, here we go. The wizards are really hard, I feel like. That's one of, um, one of the, f the fallen, or the hive wizards. Um, and then there are the fallen. Um, captains are pretty hard. That's a captain. And then, this is probably really boring if you don't like video games. <laughs> And then there's the Vex, who are kind of crazy because they can um, teleport into um, in the battle. So, like, they'll be really far away from you, and then all of a sudden they'll disappear and teleport right in front of you. So they're kind of scary. And then there's the Cabal, which are kind of silly looking, I think. <laughs> um, they're pretty, like, big guys, and they usually have shields. Um, but they're kind of, they like to, to jump really high, and so you just see a bunch of like potato shaped things jumping in the air. So those are pretty entertaining. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of, you know, that's, that's Destiny. Um, it's a really fun game, you should get it. And if you have a PS4 and you do have Destiny, um, you can, you should add me on, <laughs> on PlayStation Network. Um, you have to have PlayStation Plus to play online with other people. Um, I think you can play on like the story missions with other people without PlayStation Plus, but if you want to play 
um, the Crucible, which is the, the multiplayer, um, like, PvP games, then you have to have PlayStation Plus, which costs, um, money to subscribe. And, yeah, but yeah, you should add me if you're on there. Um, and I'll put my gamer tag in the show notes, but it's the same as everything else, which is Unperfect529. So, anyway... So that's pretty things. <laughs> um, so moving on to Local Delights. Um, this two weekends ago, which I mentioned also two weeks ago, that um, we went camping in Bodega Bay. And um, we stayed at the Bodega Dunes campground. Um, it's about an hour and a half north towards the coast um, of from here, from Berkeley. And... Um, it, yeah, we stayed there for, um, one night, and, um, we went, excuse me, we went to Shell Beach when we drove up there, because our camp check-in wasn't until 2 p.m., so we went up to the beach a little bit further north, um, went for a short hike, and then ate our lunch, went back, went, um, like, tide pooling in, at Shell Beach, and then just kind of hung around <laughs> and then we went to our campsite um, which was not exactly we reserved a site but it was also um, like choose your own when you get there so that was kind of interesting <laughs> um, the guy the ranger made it seem like there weren't that many sites left but there were still quite a few so um, we had eight people though so we were looking for a bigger site but they still had a good number left and we got there like around 3.30 probably. So, um, yeah, so that was nice that we were able to at least reserve. I think we only reserved a couple days before, um, before the weekend, so like on Tuesday. And, um, but we were still able to, they still had some campsites available. So it was a good last minute, um, place to go. Because there was also another campground that, um, was a little bit further north that, um, ran out of reservations way before. So, yeah, so we stayed there, um, had a nice campsite, it was pretty, um, there were a lot of, uh, what are they called? <laughs> there were, there were, um, bathrooms, there was running water, there was, um, a sink to wash dishes in, they had, you know, water, um, pumps, not pumps, but, like, faucets <laughs> at, um, scattered around the campgrounds, and so that was nice for first-time campers, um, which we had a few of, and yeah, and it didn't, oh, it got so warm at night, <laughs> so Will and I both have sleeping bags that are rated to 0 degrees and 15 degrees, and, um, and then our tent is, like, it's pretty well insulated, we have, um, a tent from Mountain Hardware, I think, and, um, it's got, like, the main layer and then the, the layer that goes on top of it. So we were, we got really warm, and I think everyone else got pretty warm too in their sleeping bags. So um, if you're gonna go camping at Bodega Dunes, it only gets down to like 50 something at night. So and if you have your tent and your sleeping bag, then you're probably gonna be pretty warm. <laughs> I think if you just only had your sleeping bag, you'd probably be pretty comfortable if you didn't have a tent, because it was significantly warmer in our tent than it was outside. But um, yeah. So we stayed for one night and then made breakfast in the morning and then kind of, and then just headed out. Uh, so it was a nice trip and I'll put some pictures at the end too of the places that we went to. Um, I didn't take any pictures of our campground though, but it was pretty basic. There's, you know, campsites right next to each other. Um, it was drive-in. You could keep like three cars in there, in the area and they have overflow parking too. So yeah, if you're looking for some easy camping that Bodega Dunes is a good place to go. It's not that far away from the Bay Area, so yeah, that is Local Delights. Now it's time for Wibbly Wobbly Timey Wimey. Um, I'm going to be talking about two episodes this week, episode three um, and episode four of Doctor Who, in case that wasn't clear. <laughs> um, so if you don't want to be spoiled, if you haven't seen these episodes, or if you don't want to hear me talk about Doctor Who, and you only care about knitting, then you probably stopped watching, like, way earlier. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'll put spoilers 
down here in case you want to just fast forward through until you stop seeing the thing that says spoilers and um, otherwise see you guys later who don't who let stop watching here <laughs> um, but yeah so season 8 episode 3 was robot of Sherwood and Clara wants to see Robin Hood. The doctor tells her he's not real, but will take her to show her that he's not real. And it turns out he is real, of course. Um, and then there are some issues or there's some strange things that the doctor needs to figure out what's going on because he doesn't think that um, Robin is real and there's something weird going on and there is something weird going on there are um robots that are trying to collect as much gold as they can to fix their ship and they get the sheriff to um work with them so he can take over the world so, something like that <laughs> so i really really liked this episode um after episode two of the season, I was kind of like, eh, I, that's okay. Um, but I really liked, sorry, there's a fly. <laughs> I really liked the, the this episode. I think because it was kind of like a period piece. Um, so that was, I think I enjoyed those a lot. And then um, I, I loved the dynamic that they had between Robin Hood and the Doctor. And how the Doctor was kind of like really mean <laughs> in this episode um and I don't know I'm really starting to like the humor that they're using with the doctor and like some of those um really witty remarks that he makes or quick remarks that he makes um like when he's taking the blood samples of the the merry men and he's like oh this can't be real if it was you will die in six months <laughs> and the guy's like but I am real and yeah and just these little things that the doctor says are really funny um and how he uses a spoon <laughs> to to fight um Robin Hood who is using his sword um I don't know it was kind of silly but I think it was just the right amount of silliness um, unlike the part where Strax, in the first episode where Strax hits Clara with a newspaper, that was kind of too slapstick. Um, but this episode was like right on point, um, for how silly it should be. And, um, so I like, I really liked how, um, Robin and the Doctor were like competing the whole time and Clara was like, I can't believe you guys. Um, this is so, like, she was the one that ended up, you know, solving the problem, um, while Robin and the Doctor were trying to see who's the best, the best hero. <laughs> um, so that was really funny. And I love how um, they ended the episode and how they kind of explained um, how Robin was real. And, or not, they didn't really explain it, but they justified it. And um, they basically said that his his story gets turned into legend so people kind of forget that he was real but um his story lives on forever and Robin was like yeah I like that because that way you can inspire heroes and other people and of course there was a very clear comparison with the doctor and um Robin was like he said um may our stories go on forever something along the lines of that and that was I don't know that was really nice um there are lots, in these episodes, there's been lots of comparisons between the main um, opposition, I guess, of the Doctor and the Doctor himself. So, it's interesting stuff. And I liked how we got to see a little bit more of Clara's personality. She's starting to um, become more of a unique personality instead of just a generic companion, so that's good. Um, so that was episode three, some of my thoughts, and episode four, which was called Listen, and um, I was kind of terrified <laughs> the, when I saw the previews for it um, after episode three. Um, it was about nightmares and something unseen, but you know is there, and kind of like ghosts that walk among us, and I think thought it was going to take like a different turn, kind of like um, an episode with, was it one of David Tennant's where there are actually ghosts, yeah it, it was David Tennant, because it was, I think it was in the, or, it was still with Rose, and then 
there were like ghosts walking among people and they thought that they were ghosts of their dead um, ancestors but they weren't or something not ancestors but you know family relatives and friends um, so I thought it was gonna go kind of in that direction but it didn't so that was interesting um, or it was good that it didn't and it wasn't as creepy as I was expecting to be which was also good because I don't like creepy <laughs> um, but basically they the doctor thinks that there is something um, that there's someone always there that's watching you that um, that you don't see because he goes into this um, thing about nightmares or how everyone has the same nightmare where you wake up and you think there's something under the bed and either someone grabs your ankle or something along the lines of that and um, and so he tries to go and investigate and he wants to go back to Clara's um, Clara's past because she said oh yeah she's had that dream and um, they end up accidentally going to um, Danny Pink's past because Clara was just on a date with him a really awkward date with him and once again we get to see more of Clara's character and personality develop so that's nice um, so they end up going back to, to Danny Pink's past and how he, um, he's had a nightmare and um, and then they end up, the doctor gets confused because she doesn't, he doesn't understand why Clara has this sort of, um, link between, um, between this young Danny and, and her. So then he tries to find someone, um, who's related to her somehow in the future. And he ends up finding this ast astronaut guy who's, a, a pioneer time traveler and they end up going to the very 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 end of the universe and home. and then the doctor is trying to figure out if there's anything there because it's supposed to be empty but then he thinks that there is something there so there's a lot of like creepy things that go on um and it's not really well first um i also liked this episode a lot too um, just the flow of it and then the dynamic between Clara and the doctor um, and the humor was like really on point for this um, uh, there's like one line where she's Clara's on a date she comes back um, she's still you know like in her date outfit and um, she's talking about like oh she should go back or or something and the doctor says it's too late you've already taken your makeup off and then Clara's like wait no I haven't and then the doctor says oh you must have missed the spot then <laughs> and just like how they're kind of lightly insulting each other is really funny um so they're really starting to like their dynamic um after four episodes especially these past two they're they're really you know kind of working together now um and then um, Clara and Danny Pink's, um, story, side story is kind of interesting now. Um, I guess, you know, there's romantic interest there, and it's pretty much guaranteed in this episode that they're gonna get married and have children. <laughs> so, um, there's that. <laughs> um, and, uh, overall, yeah, the episode was good, but there was one part at the end um, with kind of how they explained what was going on um, I wasn't completely satisfied with and I hope they revisit it because um, they're basically saying that it was all in the doctor's head and it was because Clara ended up under his bed when he was a child and ended up grabbing his ankle and then told him it was just a dream um, and there were these great lines about how fear is a superpower and that was just awesome like those lines were great um but anyway back to the ending um they basically said it was all in his head but then there were a lot of things that happened in the episode that really couldn't have been explained by that um i feel like i should re-watch it as well because they made you think that um like when young danny was um in his room with the doctor and clara and there was someone on the bed with a blanket over his head um, they, at first they made it seem like, oh, it was this mysterious thing that the doctor's searching for. And then at the end they made it seem like, oh, maybe it was just like a kid. Um, and you kind of get to see what it was in the reflection, but it doesn't seem like it would just be another kid that was hiding in, in, um, in his room, which was kind of, 
and you don't really hear anyone walk in when they're under the bed when Clara and Danny are under the bed um, so I yeah I'm not completely satisfied with it it was all made up there are other explanations for everything um, like at the end where <clears throat> where they're at the end of the universe and there's knocking on the ship and the doctor tries to say um, because Clara is kind of terrified and she's like explain um, like give me a reassuring explanation and the doctor is like oh it it's probably just like the pipes cooling and oh it's probably just all the metal shifting but they're pretty clear like four knocks you know on a door and then um and then the door opens also and the doctor says he's not doing it and i suppose he could be doing it um but i don't know i'm just not completely satisfied with the way that they ended it but hopefully, if it's, I don't know, maybe they'll, they'll revisit it. I forget if it's, if Moffat was the one that wrote this one, if Stephen Moffat wrote this one. But if he did, he'll probably revisit it <laughs> and, and maybe, maybe, um, give a better explanation of what was going on. So those were my thoughts about, um, the last two episodes of Doctor Who. I am really starting to warm up to the new series. Um, really liking the new Doctor and the way he interacts with Clara. So I think it's going good. Um, I was worried about, after the second episode, I was kind of worried, but now after four, I think, I think they're, they're doing, they're going in a good direction. So yeah, that is it for Wibbly Wobbly, Timey Wimey. I will take off the little spoiler so you can come back now. Um, not that there's that much else, but, um, so just to wrap up, um, social media stuff. Um, I'm Eliana Nitz on Ravelry, I am Unperfect529 on Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and PlayStation Network. <laughs> um, also on Xbox, I think I'm also that. Not that I've been playing any Xbox games lately. But when Halo comes out, Halo 5, I'll be on there. <laughs> um, and then um, I'll have a link to the group in Ravelry and... Yeah, I haven't really been that active in the group lately, um, mainly because work has been really busy and then I've been spending a lot of time playing Destiny, so yeah, um, I'll try and, you know, try and put more stuff together. And eventually I want to do some knit-alongs and maybe spin-alongs and maybe some giveaways. Um, I might do something for like a 20th episode, maybe, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I need to figure out what I would give away first. I think it might be from my stash because, um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Or maybe I'll make like a project bag. That might be a good idea. I don't know. We'll see when we get there. Um, so yeah, that is it. I will see you guys in two weeks. Bye.